I will show you how sectioned images are made. Above all, I would like to express my gratitude to the people who donated their body for the purpose of medical education. The cadaver is already frozen in the box. I put the box on the cutting machine and tightly fasten it. This is a special machine designed to consecutively cut the cadaver. I cut the box into thin slices using the machine. Normally, I cut them to be 0.2 millimeters thick. We clean the frost on the cut side and trim the sides. We then take pictures of the cut sides using a digital camera and make sectioned images. This process is repeated to create the sectioned images. I hope these sectioned images will help you study anatomy. In this sectioned image, the lying cadaver is observed from below. Therefore, this part is the anterior side of the cadaver. This part is the posterior side. This part is the right side. And this is the left side. This is just like the CT and MRI conducted from hospitals. On the muscular system chapter, we will show you not only the muscles, but also the bones where muscles are attached. This is the skull, which contains the brain. This is the cervical vertebra which contains the spinal cord. On the front of it, there is the mandible. The mandible is the only bone which can be moved from the skull. The clavicle and scapula connects the torso bones and arm bones. You can easily touch your own clavicle and scapula. The scapula meets the humerus at the shoulder joint. And on this sectioned image, you can see the up end of the humerus. From the vertebral column, the thoracic vertebrae are the ones attached to the ribs. The ribs go to the anterior side of the body and attach to the sternum. See that the heart is located behind the sternum. The humerus meets with the ulna and radius. The lumbar vertebrae are located under the thoracic vertebrae. The hip bones meet with the sacrum to organize the vertebral column consists of the cervical vertebrae, 
thoracic vertebrae, lumbar vertebrae, and sacrum. The hip bones are attached to the sacrum. The hip bones and sacrum both look like cylinders. When a female gives birth, the baby passes the sacrum and hip bones. The ulna and radius meets the carpal bones at the wrist joint. The carpal bones continue to the metacarpal bones and to the phalanges. Of course, the phalanges are located at every finger and there are a total of five metacarpal bones. With the exception of the bone that goes to the thumb, four of them are shown here. The hip bones on both sides look like cylinders. The hip bone meets the femur at the buttocks joint. The reason why the insides of the bones look red is because of the bone marrow which produces blood cells. At the knee joint, the femur meets the patella. The white part is cartilage. At the joint, bones are covered with articular cartilage. The cartilage of the knee joint is easily damaged when walking or running, so you should be very careful. At the knee joint, the femur ends and the tibia and fibula begins. The tibia is bigger than the fibula, thus it can easily be touched. The tibia and fibula meet the tarsal bones at the ankle joint. Also, the tarsal bones meet the metatarsal bones, and the metatarsal bones meet the phalanges.